Everybody have a chance to look at the agenda? Yep. Yep. Any, uh, any issues with it? Everything okay with it? I, I make a motion we approve the agenda with, for the future, removing the meeting norms. I second that. Any discussion? Could, could I ask what's your reason for that, Ms. Marion? Uh, the reason is, is what's the reason? Uh, I mean, the, it's this isn't on any agenda anywhere in the United States of America except for it's us. Right. Yeah. You're taking it personally. <laughs> sure. well, yeah, yeah it, it, it was put on there for I'm a personal reason. <laughs> right, we're <laughs> taking it <laughs> It's an insult to our intelligence. We can, we can, we can kill one less tree oh, and get right. it out of one day. Okay. Right. So advance a little second? I'll second it, sir. Yeah, if I find it. I think it already. I already yeah, we seconded it. Yeah, already yeah. seconded it. You did? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. sorry. I did you do that. I thought we did last year. I got one So, obviously, with reserving the right to go through this at any time that we feel it necessary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it should, should never become necessary to <laughs> talk with people. No, I was okay. trying to All right, so moved and seconded that we remove the meeting norms. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Um, abstentions? That motion prevails. Uh, all right, so um, everybody, I mean, we kind of focused on that, I guess. But everybody's okay with the rest of the agenda then. Uh, everybody got the date for the next meeting set? Yep. October 15th. You have a chance to take a look at the minutes. Any discussion on the minutes? Motion? Move to approve. Minutes have been moved. Second? Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that the minutes from the previous meeting be approved. Any discussion? There was just a typo in the date. Yeah, that's all right. There's a 204, maybe 2014. Yeah, then. So, um, <clears throat> anything else? No. So we need a motion in order to approve that amendment. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, make a motion to approve it with the correction to the date. That's okay. Right. Sounds good. All in one motion. Perfect. Second. Second. Further discussion. We moved and seconded the minutes be approved with that one uh, correction. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, I'm abstaining. It's no abstention. Okay. And uh, the motion prevails. Minutes are approved. Citizen comments? Yes. I'm behind you. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I think everybody knows that I'm Gloria Kramer, and I'm a citizen, and I'm also a Friends member. And I did a little research on my own about boards, um, just people that I know that were on boards, and some are paid, some are not. Some are required to bring in a certain amount of attention, some are not. So I don't know where we are on that, if we have to do that or not do that. But my feeling, and you all know my feeling on the library, this is the most beautiful library possible. And instead of looking at cutting, I wish we would be more focused on expanding. Because we have a beautiful building and potential. And we are one of the things that the real estate people mention when they want a business to come in or when they want people to come in my houses. So I don't know what, I know what I'm already doing, but I don't know what else can be done. But if you would tell me that there's some other activity, you know, I'm always dropping off and talking up the library. And I, you may have probably have seen me and I'm a pest, but that's it. The other thing I wanted to mention was Last meeting, Linda mentioned to you all of the things 
that the government is now saying, if you don't understand it, go to your library. Well, you can't cut staff. You gotta add people. I mean, you, we've got a room full of electronic equipment down there. I know nothing about, and I don't need to, because I just, I'll come in and ask. But there's a lot of people that do want to come in. Ask Linda, she'll tell you. But they come in and they want to know how to do this and this, and it takes time, and you're pulling somebody off the front desk, probably. I don't know that for sure. But if you were all, please talk about that from your point of view. I'm just telling you from mine. And if there's something else I could be doing as a citizen, as a friend, as a resident, Please, tell us. Because if, if you don't, how will we know to do it? That's all. Okay. Thanks, Gloria. Well, you know how I feel. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. All right, director's report. Um, I guess... I'm going to let you look through this because I do have a lot of statistics in there and I do have a paragraph. What I'd like to mention though is I have had a lot of uh, young students, our library aides going off to college, so I've been hiring quite a few library aides. Um, I have moved one library aide into a library clerk position and that's where they work at the front desk. He's still in training. We've had an exciting month here. The trans alarm for the fire keeps beeping. Um, they're supposed to come and fix it. Finally, I just said reset, because it was making noise. I mean, it was, you could shut it off, but then when it got to be the time when there was a power outage, it consistently would do it every day. So I just, we have had a horrendous amount of car smell here. Um, one day when it was super humid and no breeze, I closed the library at 2 o'clock. I noticed the police department left at the same time. Uh, otherwise, what we did is I did a lot of, put a lot of fans in and I kind of watched what direction the smoke was going and I'd open the windows on the opposite side trying to get the tar out of here. Where did that come from? Because they were repairing the roof. Oh. And my latest update oh, on that's the... Right. <laughs> the top. My latest update on the <laughs> they don't fix the street. Yeah. On the roof. <laughs> starting after our latest rainfall, it leaks. They came again today to look at it. We need a good drought again. You know. That's what we're doing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's a spot in room two sixteen, there's a spot in the IT room where the tile did fall and the friends uh, Store room and also their store. Also, there's a tile where you can, well, the gentleman that was looking at it could poke his finger through it, so the tile. I am going to have to talk to the city. We need some tiles in here. We got a yeah, lot of tiles. I was going to ask who repairs that. Well, I need to talk to city them. The building. Right. And, and, and the repair. And I also need to talk to him about repairing that entrance there where it's all brown because water really soaked in. But I will work on that. And that's pretty much all I have. Anybody have questions on the statistics I provided with you in that packet? I try to provide that those statistics in case you are questioned by someone. Um, you know, I try to make sure I let everybody know that once a year we do purge the car car holders that don't are inactive. What you didn't say was how many got purged. No, I didn't say that. But I is it do. is it a hundred? Is it five hundred? Is it a thousand? I cannot tell you that. I never kept track of it. I just want to make sure we have an up to date database, not one with a bunch of garbage. Um, the visitor count continues to be high, um, around five hundred a day. Um, and then I gave you. Um, and that's a physical count, right? It's at the door, yes. Front, north, and south door. And that does include anything police related. Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't had the police in the building. Unless you're coming to the library. Yeah. But you can look at this stuff. Um, our do 
downloadables are right now at 7,960. I talked to one of the chairs of the municipality and this individual got, has gotten a nook because I said to him, I haven't seen you very often and it's because he has a nook and he downloads. Who is number one? Okay. So it, it makes sense for number two then, right? And then, I, again, I gave you some uh, information on the summer reading program, our programming here, and, and, and the programs that we've been having. I don't know if you did, is the chalk still on the front end? I didn't pay attention, but that we have one day. Okay? Anything else would you like to know? Anybody? Anything? Um, Linda, on the uh, <clears throat> have we? I'm looking at the mm -hmm. Go ahead. card holders. Mm -hmm. E-library collection. What page? Uh, four. And where do you see e-library? Right in the middle of the page. Oh, if you notice the syllabus or the index on the front page, it says A, B, C, D, E. E is circulation of by material type. Okay. And then I have the monthly circulation, and down below I have the library collection. And then no, I, I'm sorry. I, I thought I, I thought it was electronic. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, I didn't stand for electronic. Got it. But okay. I do have a mistake. Okay. I was wondering, could we get a graph? Can you can you go back and uh, I don't want to you know, load you up with stuff to do, but I'd like to see a graph with some of this. Um, so overall card holders. I want to. I, I just want to get a sense of of uh, increases, decreases in uh, in uh, activity. You know the card holders, the uh, circulation, uh, print versus non-print. Just to get an idea what people are doing here, because I think we're going to need this information when we kind of get things settled here. We're going to, I think, we're going to need to focus on what the future of this library is going to be. Do you want it broken down by municipality? No, not necessarily. Uh, it, I don't know. Anybody want that by municipality? No. I think it's just good. Yeah, good to see a you know like a five-year graph to see what the trends are. I don't know if they have that much information um, archived, but I can find out. Okay. Because that's one of the reasons we're paying more at Indian Head was to get some software where we could um, show what's going on. Yeah. I'll, I'll work on that. So it's just be manual. Then the question about circulation. Um, how many, do you know how many books are either reserved or renewed online out of the total serve? Um, or DVD or anything? Reserved. Materials. Um, I do know. Um, I would assume the majority of the reserves are online because that's only you put to that. So you're looking for what? No, I, it, it, or, it's just uh, with if there's 500 physical visitors a day, but the cert count is high. It's I, it's really kind of just trying to understand the way people use the library, really. You know, it gets kind of skewed when you have children come in. You know, they take ten of these little tiny books. Right. So, you know. Um, but that's still reflected in the kids' activity, right? Right. Yeah. Right. I just did a. a I, I, I do know we average about seven to nine hundred on that reserve shelf down downstairs every day. And the majority of that's done online, you're saying. It has to be done online, yes. Renewals, that varies. Because mm -hmm. they can come up to the desk or they can even check out on the 3M and it will be 
unless there's a, re oh, a reserve on the item or the fines are over $10. See, our young adults aren't too much into nonfiction. Right? No. Hmm. Must be getting enough of that in school. <laughs> Both assignments. <laughs> our young adult collection is small. Could be I think that it goes back to your purpose of the library. You know, because I think we do need to focus on that. Because when I look at this, I see videos and fiction. I mean, so. You know, we have to understand the purpose of the library mm -hmm. to see where we're going. Yeah. So, see a lot of videos. And the, that's part of where I was going, because yeah. I was getting ready to say, as Linda was talking, uh, I know this isn't an unusual statement, but I just literally, in the past two days, just did kind of like a major research project. And, I mean, everything's available out on the web. So if you have a computer, you're doing it at home. Mm -hmm. So trying to figure out what the library means is where I've been getting at. But in San Antonio, they just opened a completely bookless library. Really? In the last week, yeah. San Antonio, San Antonio opened up a library. It's not a book uh, on shelf. <laughs> what do they do there? It's distribute. It's all electronic. It's electronic. Uh, come in so it's an office, maybe. I don't know what that is. I suppose you come in and drop off books. You order them online. You come in and pick it up. Order them online, you download them online, you read them, and you upload, upload the license back. You know, to an ebook or something. You know, it's just all, all electronic. Well, I, I you know, I, th there was an article a while back about how I can't remember where it was, but there are libraries now that are that are in order to survive, they're doing things that are just way out of the ordinary, uh, renting uh, tools and things like that. Um, obviously, uh, that takes a capital. Outlay to be able to bring them in and maintenance and everything else, but I mean, I, I, everybody I think is struggling trying to figure out what the future of their library is going to be. And I agree. I, I, I think that I, I think we're at a good point right now where we need to try to figure that out. Well, we try. We need to try to understand how people are using our library. Right. And that's the reason for all my questions is just trying to get a bird's eye view of what they're doing, how they're doing it. Yeah. If there's 500 people coming in here a day, what are they coming in for? I mean, if they're coming in to pick up their book, then it's a fiction, you know. I will. And 50% of those are being transferred in. Right. You know, what's with the collection? I will say this. Uh, today, I believe we had 15 bins, and I helped unload them. And we had two rows of videos and movie music that came in from other libraries, those DVDs. Correct. Music is like one of our poorest collection, and we get tons of that coming in every day. Current or new releases? No. What the primary order? Or? Sheet music? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it varies. Sit down to piano. Yeah, they're all going. They're all going home and playing it on their piano. <laughs> well, you, you know, I see a shift. I've been thinking about this myself. You see a shift. You know, when libraries were first open, it was more educational, right? Now it's entertainment. When I look at you know the report and the activities and how we're, dr we're driving kids here, we're driving here them here for you know, you know puppeteers to come in and provide entertainment and that type of thing. It's, it is a good, I think it's a good exercise to try to figure out what is our goal um, with, with the library here in Hudson. Because it's, to me, it's been a, a pretty big shift towards entertainment with DVDs and fictional books um, and research. Marion is correct. I mean, uh, I do research all the time for my business and I never use the library. Um, so. You know, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't think a lot of people even think about, I'm going to go into the library and research something, right? I don't, who does that? I don't know anybody that does that. that My anymore. kids don't do that anymore. Well, the number, yeah, the number of forms that I downloaded 
as examples online is just incredible. You know, you don't have to come to the library for a form anymore. Remember when you used to have stacked up in potholes, you know, tax forms and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, they don't even come here for that anymore. Yes, they do. They're most unpleasant if they have to use a computer. <laughs> How about the, any idea, Dan, at schools? I, I suspect that they're being utilized for research, for papers and things like that, kids. You mean technology? No, just the, the, the resource in the library. Well, Perhaps technology, I don't well, know. Well, yeah, they're, I mean, they go to most, I mean, most of what they're you know, finding is online resources. And that's, that's where most of our kids are going, and that's um, what, we've, what we have. Uh, and I think it's probably typical in most places. Um, the, uh, you know, the hardback, the book in your hand to read uh, is more often than not um, fictional, uh, some sort of entertainment, entertainment value. But the, the struggle that we uh, have discovered is that our kids don't read informational text well. You know, I mean, they don't read the, the resources. Uh, well, that's the kind of skills that we're you know, we need to work on. Technical manuals, yeah, software. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they have trouble with information text. So, what's the what's the percentage of kids? Is there is there is there a percentage of kids that don't have access to computers? Access to electronic devices? Access well, you know, we've done just. I can speak only for the middle school, but we've we've done some you know, surveys to find out what the access is, and you know, it's in the mid nineties. Yeah. Percentages. I mean, an awful lot of people have, and those that don't have actually said, you know, you've got that in the library. You've you know, used the library, but you know, we have there's a high level of access to technology in this community. Yeah. I did a little exercise based on your statistics, just real quick. How many computer stations are there active? There's 12, and then we take overflow is on if the six. Uh, okay. If you had one computer, and if you counted 24 hours in a day for 30 days, you would be in excess of those 720 hours, 30 days worth, 24 hours a day, by 18% on the computer usage per, per hour. So, I mean, I imagine that stuff's all being utilized at big batches of time, but the way I see it is there's a lot of research being done or a lot of usability, and I imagine most of that's research because it's probably more convenient sitting at a computer than it is going through card files and running down materials. Checking your fancy football standings. <coughs> well, it is used as a communication tool for families as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Juan? Uh, Linda, you're all done there then? Uh... Well, review your to date revenue and expenditure. You want to report, Rich? No, I'm going to wait for the finance section. Okay. okay. It says finance. I got finance. August revenue, August expenditure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the uh, item C, are we on item C then? Um, do you want to look at the year-to-date uh, revenue and expenditure report, which is pages 4 through 6 in your packet? The Finance Committee went over this quick. The one that we printed off or the one? That this one right here. Now, there's page numbers on there, Rich. Yes, we noticed. Very nice. I wasn't the one. Big numbers. <laughs> she took the answer. I can read all of that. Yeah. Oh, well, she wasn't talking to you. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay. You, you know the number system, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I just wasn't sure if you were referring to what I printed off or yes. what you gave me. If you look on the, you know, you will see, and um, it tells you. We're, town of St. Joe's right here has paid, it just wasn't in August, so that has been paid, it just doesn't show up here at this point in time. But it's a payment in August, okay? The city, the village, and the town have made their second payment, half the payment for the yearly support, okay? 
There's nothing that says what the colors are. Why the green? Where is the green? Down here? Page five. Page five, four, five. What does the green mean? That is, I kind of just copied the colors that, that Neil has on his report. So this report really is generated by Neil. So it's just from the city. But there's some highlighting in here in these center columns that are in the totals. Yeah. Yeah. Right in here. It doesn't delineate. Right. Delineate uh, no reason why they're green. green. Just to. That's his. You know. I'm sure he's saying general operating subtotals are in this line. Oh, looks like you're calling something up. Total expenses are in this line. Yeah. For yeah. For instance, you know, April is sitting on generating operating subtotal. There's green and good. Only April. To me, that's pointing something out, but I don't know what it is. But it's not. Give me a reason to ask a question. Yeah. You want okay. it clear? I can make it clear next month. I I just thought the color had a purpose. That's all. Okay, so we've looked through this. Um, then we need to talk about if you want to know the balance sheet. This is our fund balance at this point. At the beginning of the year, we had $232,511 in the fund balance. And the ending balance you know, with the actual would be 242. But in reality, what he said, because I asked him the other day, and he said, well, let's, I said, well, let's say we projected an 80% deficit, or 80,000. He said, then you should be taking it out of this 232. Because I said, well, how do we know what our fund balance would be? at the end of the year because you know you get all these numbers from this gentleman and um i want to know <laughs> so i said well i can't remember at the time i couldn't remember what our fund balance or what our deficit was planned to be but i just sh shot out eighty thousand when it was there fifty four thousand fifty four yes. so then if you subtract that then you know if we follow through to the end of the year at 54,000 deficit, then it would be okay. Because I think that's been a question before. Well, 2013 is projected to be minus 67,247. Well, that one's more you're talking about, Tita. You're not talking about 14, you're talking about 13. So you take 67 from the 232. And then you know what our balance will be at the end of the year and that fund balance, yeah, that is reserve. That be your projected balance. Yeah. If, the, if, if that the goes. Mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, we always have it in the packet. Nobody really talks about it or asks questions. And I just figured I should because it's already September. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Then... Page 12 is, at one point I was asked to have, okay, that was page 12. I, know, it's really bad. I was asked to have an actual account, what you would say would be the remaining balance at the end of the year. And I had um, Neil create this for us. When I was in the finance meeting, I asked, and this was from before, I wanted to add more money to the book account, to the DVD account, and the periodical account. Um, in 2011, Books are 77,250. This year, they're 75,000 is what we got allocated. And 2011, audiovisual stayed the same in 2012, which was 20,000. Oops. And then in, um, 
the periodicals were 9,000, and I believe it's 57 as the, as the amount we allocated this year. And when I asked for the additional funds for these accounts, I was, you uh, requested that I state where I want to get the money from the budget, the actual budget. I'm asking that we probably take the money out of part-time. The amount I would be asking for would be, whoops, uh, 10,000 for books, 4,000 for audiovisuals, because in reality in 2013 it was 16, so we lost like 4,000 there, and then I was asking, I was asking if I couldn't get 4,000 for periodicals, to add to the periodical. Um, and where is that coming from? Let's see, where is it? For example, this year we allocated 55,721 for periodicals, and, and in 2012 and 2011 we had 9,000 in that category. We really cut our budget this last year. Books in the 2013 budget is at 67,000, and I was asking if we couldn't have an additional 10,000 for books because in 2012, we had 75,000 in it, and in 2011, we had 77,250. Again, this was another category that we reduced the amount. And the other one I was going to ask for additional funding was in the audiovisual, because it was at 16,000 in the 2013 budget. The 2011 and the 2012 was 20,000. So the total I'm asking is for 18000 to be transferred out of the part-time salaries, which has which has a credit of 23000 is projected at the end of the year by Neil. And that's going to go where? 10,000 into books, 4,000 into audiovisuals, and 4,000 into periodicals or magazines. So I'm asking for $18,000. And while I'd like that to happen, like I think we could probably make good use of those funds, I'm not in favor of that when you have a $67,000 deficit already projected for the end of the year. We have the opportunity to cut $67,000 deficit to $49,000, and I think that's better use of the funds. That, that's just the opinion of the finance chair. Um, I would agree with the finance chair. Did I'm, this, I'm, did, go ahead, Mary. I was just simply saying I'm going to make a motion to follow the advice of the finance chair and just say let's let's hold where we're at. Did this request the initial, all right, sorry, are you making that motion right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion on the floor, is there a second? When you, when you say hold where we're at. We're going to have a $23,000 $23, access in part-time salaries we're holding. So you're not reducing by 18000 the part-time? Correct. We're holding these $23,000. Instead of transferring it? Yes. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion? We're, <coughs> one thing about budgets is we've been operating in a historical deficit, which was certainly planned. We all know that. But we're projecting the same thing for next year. So we're setting ourselves up for Leonard to come back again next year and say, well, we reduced it to $16,000. We reduced it to $65,000. We reduced it to $5,700. I mean, this is, tends to get monotonous at some point. Yes, we reduced it. There was a point in reducing it, and it was to try to get us someplace close to whole. And so that's why the budget was reduced. So now if we reallocate, we're kind of we're kind of operating by 
the bottom line baseline budget rather than trying to hold back the deficit. I've got a question, a couple actually. Um, had this been referred to the Finance Committee, this request? Okay, so you guys dealt with this mm -hmm. as part of your report coming up? Okay. And then, uh, help me with this. Um, on page 15, our budget is for 65000 for books, is that right? Yeah. Our year-to-date expenditure is 33000 mm -hmm. on books. Mm -hmm. And do you have the remaining balances that you have? Are we spending that? Do you have that plan to be spent? I have plans, yes. Okay. So you. So in addition to this, you're also hoping to spend more mm -hmm. books. Has this money already been spent? A certain amount of it has been spent already. Yes. It's um. I just you know it's it's invoices that I have received since August thirty first. Okay. Okay, so you're uh, essentially, I mean, you're, you're saying then that we're going to end up with a uh, hidden budget on the, on the books. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. just figured nine months into the year we've got a nice savings there. I guess not. Okay. Linda, I think historically you've been very late second half on the books, right? Yeah, I need to start pushing my staff, unfortunately. with. The lack of staffing this last couple of months, I've, they haven't been able to get at it. As I've also seen that there's a lot of new publications around Christmas time. That yes, the money. demand for Christmas, yes. It's usually when publishing not a lot of publications. And so, you know, we, we try our best. We try, uh, we try very hard to be a, a competitive library with the other libraries so that we reduce the amount of materials coming in. Otherwise, you know, that, that is where the most workforce goes. Well, the, in the, uh, you made that request in reference to three things, uh, books, AV, and periodicals. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering if, um, if um, we were to ask you of those three things, just using those as the categories, what would you find most most pressing as a pressing need? Would it be periodicals, would it be, would it be books? It's a hard question to answer. I know we offer periodicals. We can't get a statistic on it because people sit here in the library. We have to realize in periodicals we have the newspapers, and that area is busy all the time. So I can't say, well, we got, you know, books. Well, you know what I'll say is this give me a flat amount and I'll divvy it up. Give me an amount and then I will go from there. Periodicals, I hate to see it drop so low because it. I guess that's where, that's kind of where I'm going with this. Because, uh, yeah. The newspapers are very valuable to a lot of people. I am amazed, you know, like I got USA Today and Hudson, Obser Hudson Star Observer downstairs plus upstairs, but people are always sitting there reading the newspaper. When I go to lunch and I sneak out to get a newspaper, pe there's people in that area reading all the time. And, oh, I'm, I'm just bringing it up for a simple reason in terms of uh, I can appreciate and support um, try to reduce the, the overall deficit. I mean, that, you know, that, that makes some sense. But I'm just wondering if there, if we could strike a little bit of a balance in terms of trying to meet, you know, at least one of the needs uh, that, that you might have, uh, or a small amount that you could provide any way you like. Still continue to enhance our services to a certain extent, you know, not just continue to uh, diminish those, those services. Which is why I was asking if you thought there was one of those that was a greater priority, because we could do we could accomplish both, not to the extent of the full amount, but we could certainly accomplish you know, a sizable uh, amount as far as um, you know, the deficit is concerned. But at the same time, provide a little bit that will help her enhance services. I'm going to jump in here and say we got a budget. It's the middle of September. 
we got three months left in the fiscal year. Now, first of all, why, did, why aren't we planned to the budget for those items? That's number one. So for that, I'm kind of uptight that we're trying to exceed it, but that means that our budget that we have next year is crap because we have the same reduced funding for those same items. So our budgets are phony. Why aren't we spending to the budget? You had nine months knowing what the budget is. Now we want to exceed it by $18,000. I got a problem with that. She's not looking to exceed the budget. She's looking to shift the funds from one item. I know, we had a savings. It doesn't mean that you can just grow everything else because you need it. That means that our next year books, audio, visual, and periodicals is a crap budget. It was a crap budget. So we no, should it's what we have to do to keep this library operating. So we should go in and rework that budget. Sounds like to me. It sounds like you should just push it back up to sixty-seven thousand dollars in the hole. For next year. Well actually more than that. Seventy-three, seventy-eight. Yeah, because we want to add eighteen thousand of those items. So so we're fifty-four thousand dollars in the hole we'll just Take it right up to seventy-two thousand. If you had a personal checking account and you said you're going to be sixty-seven thousand dollars short, would you try to spend more money? I don't think so. No, but I take the I savings where I can get it. Uh, but I mean, the bottom line is you're sixty-seven thousand dollars short. By moving the money around, does it mean you're still going to be sixty-seven thousand dollars short? Now, how do you spend money you don't have? Unless you want to take it out of the reserve fund. You know, if you want to do something like that, take it out of the reserve fund, lower your reserve funds. It just means you're going to run out of money sooner. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we're, just, we're just saying we're going to run out of money sooner. What she really didn't expound upon is she's, she's projected with, with people leaving and new, new hires coming in. She projects her, or Neil projects a $23,000 surplus at the end of the year in that part-time salary category. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to take a portion of that to help enhance the offerings of the, of the library, as like Dan was, like Dan was doing the same. You know, and I said, well, hey, if that happens, and I said, the finance committee meeting, I said, hey, if that happens, you know, I said at last meeting, I said, you always over overestimate uh, your expenses and underestimate your income and right. makes it look better. So I said, for next year, that just helps enhance our position for next year, if that happens again, you know, $23,000 surplus in part-time salaries, Next year lowers our next year's deficit as well, but you know, I mean, you're 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 both right. Maybe you need some more money to to enhance the the uh, the offering, but you know, yeah, we hate running continually running deficits. Yeah, but it also means that the money we have in for next year is wrong. No, it's not wrong. She just wants to take it and, and use more of it, which I'm not sure that I'm really gonna. Hold out. I just, you know, and, and obviously you're not, and a couple others are not. So well, I just think that we're nine and a half months into the budget year to ask for another eighteen thousand dollars. I don't care where it's from. And she's got thirty-two thousand dollars left in the book budget already, right now. She spent thirty. There was sixty-five. She spent six thirty-eight or whatever, or thirty-three, thirty-three. So you got thirty-two left. Compared to the numbers. This is a much bigger discussion than just that, though, because from what I can see just in this little discussion here, that there's ways to wipe out that 54000 So the whole discussion that we've had about what we're doing as far as looking for other options for the library is a moot point. And as far as I'm concerned, why, why wouldn't we look at Reducing, that's what I was a little perplexed at the last meeting is why weren't we, why didn't we present a budget that was zero? We have a budget that's, we're, we're leaking $54,000. If we have the ability to cut the part time, look at other ways to save that $54,000, then why wouldn't we do that and, and wouldn't have to have this whole exercise in leaving this facility? Because we know that we're going to operate on our deficit, we've been planning on doing that for for the the five, four years that we've been in here. We've known that, 
And like I said, if you plan, if you plan and and uh, and do things correctly, you can plan on a fifty-four thousand dollar deficit. But chances are, it's only going to be twenty-four or thirty, or maybe zero if you get really lucky, depending on how you allocate it or how you spend your money. You know, that's that's the way the that's the way we've done we've done it in the town of Hudson for for thirty years that I've been on the board. Okay, you just uh, you end up with more money in the at the end of the year just because of the planning process. You've got a budget here, and and Marion's correct. You know, you, the budgets the budgets a I don't say it's a guideline. It's 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 fairly rigid. You know, we have to we have to take action to move money between accounts. But the bottom lines between the incomes and the revenues and the expenditures is what you're really looking at and you're focusing on and if hopefully your expenditures are less and your revenues are higher. Well I get that but I'm still going back to the point that why, are, why aren't we looking at just breaking even next year and not going through the exercise? Am I missing something here? I don't get why we're... I don't know if you can operate yeah. without break, with breaking even. Okay but let me just jump in Dave because I agree 100% with what you said. The, the, the difference between what we're talking about is we're looking to spend the money that and the budget, and you're saying utilize that money and yeah. put it aside. So, at least it, that's what I understand. So that you have a cushion. To your point, if we had got twenty-three thousand dollars this year, and we save another twenty-three thousand dollars next year, to Dave's point, because we're budgeting high and spending less, that's forty-six thousand dollars. That's my point. We're almost zero then. Right. So by not spending it on books, we're almost at zero next year. That's where I was agreeing with the finance chair, and I didn't understand he was agreeing with your point to spend the money. To, I, I mean, I say take the money, if there's extra money, and apply it towards the fund balance so that we don't deplete the fund balance, so that we can continue to operate in this facility. Because I, I, I'm not one that you know as i've said from the beginning you know people pigeonholed me in this position of wanting to leave the building i'm not in that position but I, i'm not in a position where we can go back to our municipalities and ask for a lot of extra money to stay here because i was at the village and i don't see a whole lot more coming i don't know where everybody else is at the city or town but i don't see they don't have the money in their budget so I'm a, I would advocate for, you know, if there's ways to uh, manipulate the, the budget, the part-time hours, or whatever we've got going on, uh, and not have to go through that whole, because it's going to be a huge exercise in about a six months when, when we look to find a way to make it work if we keep spending money in the rate that we're, at the rate we're spending it. If, if I'm not mistaken, I believe our, our motion and second is leave the money there. I'm okay with that as long as it's not spent. That's what we're saying. That's the motion. Yeah, okay. that's the motion. That's the motion. As long as it's <laughs> but you're saying, you're saying leave it, but, but, I'm, but I'm, I, I, I would go beyond that. It moves to the reserve if it's left. Okay, but, but, yeah, but, we're, but we're also not uh, necessarily saying to Linda, you can't spend that on part-time salaries right. either. We haven't said that. She could spend it on part-time salaries and spend the money. I would say if you're going to make that motion, you make it more stringent, and say that we're you know we if that money is there, it's not to be spent on part-time salaries for the rest of the budget year. It's to be put towards the fund balance. That's what I would say if we were going to make a motion. We've already got a motion on the floor. I'm just saying now that, that and, I, and and I think that's I think that's something we need to consider here in a moment. Um, I I I'm very nervous about sending mixed messages. To the municipalities, um, we've told them we need money, and um, they, the people. Well, I've talked with the mayor, and he said, "What do you need it for? Tell me what you need it for. You better have a good reason why you need money. Don't just say you need money. You have a good reason for it." And we have cut hours here. We cut a day, and um, and now we're talking about I think nowhere in this discussion until now. Has anybody said let's use this money to stay open on Mondays? So we've 
we've capitulated to that to that point. We can we can survive without Mondays here. Well, because if we, if what we're going to say then is that we're going to move part of our budget over here because we have a surplus, then we're telling the municipalities we don't need to be open on Mondays. Instead, we're going to buy books or periodicals. And again, I think it's just a mixed message. I would like to I support your motion. Please motion, Marion's. Um, I could. I would like some input from Linda on your suggestion before we vote because maybe we want to amend this motion and that would be up to you too uh, to make sure that that money does go to savings rather than being spent on part time if we agree not to spend it on books and periodicals and things like that. I think that we need to go to the municipalities with a good message and that we've done everything that we can to cut to save money and, uh, and, uh, and now we're at bare bones and this is what we need. Beyond that, I don't know until we see the trend line for all of these different services that we know where that money should be spent. Should it be spent on books? Should it be spent on periodicals? Should it be spent at all? But I mean, if we're going to spend it, let's follow the trend line. Let's follow where people access the library and the reasons that they access it. That would be my thing, my, so, and, and we're not going to know that for a while, but I think that that would give us a lot more information, better information. The question I, I have, have for you is that, I mean, we're, we're talking about the budget right now. Is this an overall budgetary discussion, or is this a discussion about these specific items? I think it's, a, it's about this. It's Okay, because there's a lot more. We're not. I mean, the budget has been approved. Mm -hmm. It's been to the municipalities. We'll hear reports from those people that have, have taken it to their municipalities. But the budget really is not open for discussion right now. But my dis my discussion with my municipality was not. Of course, we're talking that, about this year yet, not next year. Right, but the discussion I was not about. We've done everything possible to make make the budget work. My point is always that we're always looking for ways to reduce costs. Right without reducing services. I guess I, I would have thought, looking from the outside in, if we're cutting hours, we're at bare bones. If we're cutting days, we're at bare bones. And now we're talking about shifting money. Uh, and if you're operating in a deficit, you're bare bones. I don't, I don't Planned agree. or unplanned. And I'm just gonna jump in here and, and, and say, I am not in favor of amending the motion for one reason. If we have a library director who, with with the people in the city have realized a $23,000 savings and we're afraid that she's gonna run and spend that money in the next three months, then we need a new library director. I don't believe that would be Linda's intention. She just announced that we're gonna have a $23,000 savings. The way I see it, I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna to sleep tonight knowing when I wake up in the morning, there's $23,000 that's gonna go into the fund to help carry us forward. And I support that statement. I agree with you. That's what we have money here for. And I agree too, but the, there's a key word here in terms of that was projected, right? Yeah, it is projected. Are, That's why we don't need to vote on $23,000. Yeah, we still very need to vote on the library. Right. Right. may so, come to support yeah, yeah. 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 I call for the question. Okay. Um. <laughs> Got a motion or a second? I know, but as far as calling for the question, it doesn't necessarily stop debate. The question has also got to be voted on if you actually want to call on the question. Yeah, you know, it's calling for a vote on that. Well, but, no, any, but just parliamentary-wise, you can't, you can't just because somebody calls for the question doesn't mean debate stops. It means that we, if you really want to call the question, then we vote on whether we're going to call the question and stop debate. I think debate's probably at an end right now anyway. Not the way we run the township. That's fine, but let's, yeah, okay, let's wait until it's parliamentary. A vote on it, call the question, and it's never heard of it. Never heard of it. For me, I'm not, it's not about a debate, but it's just a comment that I want to make here that in terms of uh, the budgetary considerations and, and the conversation that we're having here always has to be. Um, look at I think with the, with the backdrop of we have a public library and we expect certain services 
uh, and those are the services that define our library. Uh, so uh, when we make decisions about the budget, obviously we're also making decisions about uh, how we're defining our library and what it represents and what services it will provide. Um, and uh, I think we always have to kind of keep that in mind. It, uh, uh, I'd love to get to zero. I think that, that, would, that would be great. Um, but I also want the library to stand for something. I want to represent them something. I want it to be of service you know, to the community. Uh, and the direction that we're going is we're becoming uh, of less and less service. I mean, closing Mondays means we're providing less, less service. Um, and I just, when we make these decisions, I just want us to think about, you know, what the library is supposed to represent when we do this. Okay. Everybody done? We got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion prevails. Okay. All right. Linda, where are we at? Oh, well, I think it's the 2014 budget. Um, I just put it on there just to uh, talk about, well, you presented it to your townships. Um, any comments, anything we should be updated on when you presented it to your budget um, municipal okay. boards. So, Dave, you said you presented it. Yep. Any discussion, any, anything that's more done? No, we integrated into our budget. See how we're going. Yeah. I'm not going to make any rash predictions or nothing. But, uh, yeah. It's it was uh, presented with uh, under the auspices that you know we like I said last month we didn't want to didn't want to include income we didn't have and and uh, the expenses we anticipate and, and so uh, um, we I did say that we reduced the potential deficit from some 70 plus thousand dollar figure down to the 54 or whatever and hopefully we'd be in better shape than that. Okay. And it was accepted. Good. There was no action, but it was just, right. it was just integrated. I was just budget. curious if there was comment. Yeah. No. no, there was no, no, comment, no real comment either way. Okay. Uh, Rich, you didn't have a chance to do that yet? I didn't. I, I didn't because I didn't, uh, I didn't know we were done. I didn't know that was the final oh. output. But I will. I will. First meeting in October, I will. Okay. Kurt? No, I did present it to the Finance Committee at North Hudson in a similar type of situation that they had. So there's no commitment. They're going to look at their budget, but there's not a lot of fluff in the no village comment. budget, just like there's not a lot of fluff in our budget. Yeah. So I don't see any big increases coming from the village, but they're going to look at it and see what they can do. Okay. And I'm not sure if Barb had a chance or not. All right. What else do you have, Linda? Okay. Bridge the gap. This is that report that you received. Um, it tells you at this point, well, there's been more coming in, but we had $20,177,000. Um, you can see in August, I, I guess it's September 3rd, I did make the deposit, and that's what it came up to. Um, I gave you graphs on it. I realize this one down here has 35 and 33 way up on the top. Well, it's supposed to be for the city and the town of St. Joe's. Um, what I'm going to ask tonight is that we transfer funds from Bridge the Gap and put funds into postage to cover what we paid to for the mailing, which was for, for $1,464. And then I'm asking that we transfer into office supplies the $2,974 that was for printing the materials to be sent to people. Linda, Linda, did we allocate this money to even do the mailing in the first place. Didn't we, we never allocate up to four thousand dollars? But we never transferred it to exact line items. It has to be a vote on that. Okay. What was the amount other amount? Okay. Postage was one thousand four hundred and sixty four dollars. Okay. The printing was two thousand nine hundred and seventy four dollars. So I would like to transfer it into the 
line item postage, the 1464, and the line item office supplies for the 2974. When we take it out of the donation account to bridge the gap fund. I'll make the motion. I'll Transfer $1,464 from the postage. We paid the Miniman to the postage account and uh, the 2974 we paid in printing to office supplies. No second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we transfer the money to fund the Bridge Gap initiative, mailer and printing and postage. Discussion? No discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? The motion prevails. And then the next thing is the Savage Memorial Fund. I don't know if you can read that here, but we, we have collected $950 that was designated for Bridge the Cap, Gap Appeal. And I do have it in here letting people know that the William Savage Memorials was $950 and it was for the Bridge Gap Appeal. And that's more than likely a one time. Could be, yes, because it, we right. received it last year when June died, and now this year when William died. Right. And um, I believe the daughter in New York has given us, or she, Hawaii, I don't remember which, she has sent a bunch of checks. But I believe we're finished on that one. Right. So you want to put it into the Bridge the Gap Fund? The, the receipts. It is, yeah. So. But I just wanted you to know, oh. uh, and the public to know that yes, their donations for William Savage and June Savage were put into the Bridge the Gap Fund oh. as they designated. Sometimes and we probably don't let people know enough. And then, what is the next one? Website. Oh, Allie. <laughs> website. Is that just posting the PDFs on there for the Bridge the Gap? It's your statistics on that? Yep. And then the... What has been done on... Put, I think Joyce requested something. You Can we put the Bridge the Gap brochure on the PDF on the website? And we're going to put the, the current statistics from Bridge the Gap on there as well. Would you send me that PDF? I, I can't think remember. All that we were going to do. Um, and I, I believe you have to have a news article in the newspaper about the Savage donation. Mm -hmm. That was one of the things the family did request. Yep. Okay. So we don't have to. We don't have to pay for that. Are you just going to contact the Star Observer? Mm -hmm. It'll be just like one of our other little. Little things. It's gonna be a news item. Yeah. 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 We, we don't make big things. <laughs> they don't make us pay as a mechanism. Yeah. yeah. And we could even have it just part of her announcing the next program. So. Right. Okay. We don't want to Okay. Summer reading program. Here's your reports that Mary has created. She's not here today. I guess I'll just let you look at it. She has given um, statistics from 2005 to 2013. The team uh, in 2009 was higher than what it was to be, you know, this year in 2013. And I guess I'll just leave it at that. Uh, if you have questions, I guess it's Mary you would have to ask on the statistics. I would just ask why 2009 is such an anomaly. Well. Is it is that a reflection of demographics? Or? Well, I think we're getting more students or maintaining the teen level because they came here for story time. And, you know, now they're 15, 16 year olds. And um, that's what we think. I don't know if that's true. But we did have a, it wasn't as high for the children this year, but we are competing with a lot of the. Businesses are now offering story time. <laughs> so. 
it attracts people into their business. And they spend money. Well, they're trying to make some money. Who's going out? Do you remember any of them? Mary would be able to tell you. So it's... Um, also, we compete really heavily with the, the FIP Center. They have uh, more um, craft the items, more, more funds to purchase the materials for the crafts. <laughs> so we do compete with the FIP. Okay, next it's friends. I don't see anyone here. Well, Gloria. okay, Gloria. <laughs> yes, now I can't invite you officially, but I would like to invite each and every one of you to come to the library in the evening after you've worked all day. I know that. And we can just show you what we do actually when we volunteer and what we're doing and how it helps the library. Our regular meeting is the second Thursday of the month at 6.30 in this room. And you would be more than welcome. You want to let us know ahead of time. We'll have a brass band for you, for heaven's sake. But just, you know, come and find out. If you don't have a card, by all means get a card because you're going to find something you want. We know that. I have another question, though, that has nothing to do with that. With, and it's budget-minded, Linda is down to bare bones with people down there. And I know that we have volunteers that are capable of doing, all I do is busy work, but there are people that have technical skills that volunteer with us at the Friends, not every day, but they do. Is there not some way that we could help you in that area? I don't know. I mean, I know you've got rules and all kinds of stuff, but I'm sure that, you know, the Friends are here to help you. We're not against you, we're for you. We all want this library to succeed. We want to expand. We want to add. That's our purpose. This is what we talk about every month, every week. So if, I don't know who to, you know, who would look into that? I just know how busy she is. I know, if you need help, use them. Use them the best you can. It's up to Linda. She runs the library. She runs the library. Yep. Well, but I know that you've got certain requirements for people handling certain kinds of material. Well, Linda, yeah. that used to be true in earlier times, right? But not so much anymore. What are you, what are you asking? With, with employees, um, there were things that other people couldn't do because it was their responsibility. We're not as bound by that anymore, right? Can I ask a question here real quick? And, and I think my point is point of order. Union, union or on order. Oh, no. I'm going to call point of order. Yeah, okay, point of order. Point of order. I don't think we should be discussing this. It's not on the agenda. Correct. We need to discuss this on the agenda. Okay. okay. I have to agree with you. Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> To write a letter and let people Point know. of order. <laughs> I didn't even include an article in the Hudson <laughs> <laughs> I'm just as stick with the old Thanks, Lori. I'm just. Okay. I mean, yeah. you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Tell us what we can do. Right. Um, and I, 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 in fact, I'm going to be going to the Friends meeting. I'm also going to the uh, annual meeting of the foundation to talk with them. Talking <laughs> <laughs> like that. You're talking about the Library Foundation? Yes. <laughs> I didn't know the existence. Well, they, they're having an annual meeting. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, and I'll, be, I'll be at that and uh, <laughs> I'll, be at that. I'll be going to the Friends <laughs> meeting as well. I'm not sure which one yet because... Okay. Uh, it's casual. You don't have to dress formal. Oh, so I can dress down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go down from there. Thank you. Um, 
All right. So I'm not exactly sure what we're talking about here under President's comments. Review alternative proposal to renewing building lease. I don't know that there is an alternative proposal to that. Uh, although that's something that we do need to, to get uh, cemented here. Um, can, that, oops, go ahead. Can, that, can that be removed from the agenda? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Um, Hudson Community Foundation request. Did we actually, did, I don't know that we've made a request to the Hudson Foundation, have we? Not that I'm aware of. No, I, I put it on there because I know you were going to talk to them, if I remember correctly. But maybe I misunderstood that. I don't think we pursued that. No. Okay, I can take that off the agenda already. Um, I think we've, uh, let's see, we've had the update from the trustees on the um, oh, reimbursement of payments to other libraries. Anybody able to talk about this? Well, the St. Joseph's has denied our request to eliminate <laughs> that item, and therefore, under the joint library agreement, the city's not going to have to pay $40,000 next year to the other libraries because it has to be, according to the joint library agreement, unanimous decision by all of the municipalities. So three of the municipalities voted to rescind Article 7, and one, St. Joseph's namely, denied that request and want, they want to keep us paying the other libraries. Okay. And, and, I know, and I know from the Intergovernmental Council the, that my town chairman is on, he was going to talk to the mayor and have and go have a little powwow with Mr. Gavin to that hip. What I had heard, and I didn't want to mention it earlier, was that uh, Dan wanted to give half this year and, and none next year. He wanted to phase it out. That was my and, understanding. And, uh, and we, we said that that was unacceptable. It's just, I mean, we, it's not a big ticket item for these other libraries getting this money, but it's a big ticket item for us to keep it. Right. And so our 54000 next year is going to go to 94000 We didn't deduct that yet. Could. Well, it's, we, it's, we, it's, we, we, yeah, it's out of there. We, we it took that out. Oh, I thought, I'm sorry. I thought, oh, so yeah. we go back up to $94,000. Absolutely. So that's, so that's, so that's why. why it's Jeff, a huge Jeff and, Does, does Don St. Joe have 40 grand? That's why Jeff and Al were going to. Jeff was asking. Yeah. Al, <laughs> <he's going laughs> well, and I, I know that Al was not able to make that meeting because his mother in law is passing. So. That's why on so the 2014 a, budget, a, there's this little square. Simple, you notice. I thought that was out. So do, you know, duly noted. Duly noted. Duly noted. Do it as these. I thought we needed that. Yeah. All right. So well, thanks for the update on that. That's so a big update. Yeah. I was going to tell you that. Last time. The, the mayor has <laughs> it didn't come yeah. Yeah. prematurely did tell the people, people that were false and not getting any money from us. Yeah. Because we don't provide the services. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, hmm. All right, finance committee report. We did review the August uh, revenue and expenditures. The only thing to mention about revenue, uh, the expenses is that there was a three-week payroll, so the payroll was up in August because it was a three-payroll period instead of a two-payroll period, so you notice it's high. Other than that, the expenditures are in line, and there's really nothing extraordinary to report on the August revenue and expenditures. Okay. Um, rental DVDs, yeah. rental DVD report, uh, all, we're, all we're trying to highlight here is we're starting to generate some revenue on the rental program. Uh, we, we, we generated $407 so far on the rental program and uh, hoping to see that increase. Okay. But that's a 32% payback. Uh, uh, yes, but it's, yeah, we, we've spent $1,200 to get 407 at this point. Right. Time, but at least we're chipping away at it. Yeah, it's coming around. Yeah, it's coming around. <laughs> well, and I don't get even on the books. I'm not spending the three thousand right away. We go month to month, and we see what's what the demand is, and that's what we purchase. That's the report. All right. Motion. Motion to approve August regular expenditures as presented. Second. And I second it. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded for approval of uh, expenditures and adoption of the finance report. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion prevails. Uh, personnel committee? Did not meet. Okay. Um, uh, we are, thir item 13, we've got no discussion on that this time around. 
Uh, the new ad hoc committee met. Ashley, do you have a minute? Oh, I don't have them with me. Okay, I didn't. I don't think I got those printed off. I um, sent them off though. We uh, we met and uh, kind of laid out the guidelines. What we're going to try to do. Help me with this, Dan, or anybody can jump in. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, potentially uh, kind of look around and see if there's any type of building out there that might work for us. Um, we uh, are going to be looking at uh, at uh, partnering with the school district and, and researching other districts that have partnered with their um, or actually taken over their their public library system. Um, what else do we have on there? Three primaries. Yeah. Reduce the rent from the city? Negotiate with the city for the rent? Uh, Kurt is going to report on that. Okay. <laughs> Kurt's <laughs> I'm sorry. Negotiations are stalemated right now. <laughs> I saw the mayor on Sunday, there was no discussion. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, the building one, that was the building. <laughs> all the costs associated with uh, moving the library. Right. What was the third item? Uh, I, I got it right here. Okay. Fundraising for capital to buy the building, fundraising for yes. operational yeah. expenses, partnership with uh, okay. including the Hudson School District and the FIPS. And then alternative alternative building for the library. Yeah. So those are the areas we're, we're going to look at right now. And certainly we're open to uh, other options as they come along. If anybody's got any ideas, get them to us and we'll explore those as well. Um, but we, uh, we want to make sure that we've looked at all avenues for the future. Well, that's uh, the reason why I talked about the budgetary part. We can talk about that again, but I, I do believe there's more. There's other avenues to cut the budget, so. Right. Without cutting services, okay. hours, those kinds of things. All right, um, that's it for that committee. Any uh, any comments or items for future agendas? Is there anything we need to do as a board for the next agenda, depending on when does when when or might. Dave, uh, Dan, get them and take that up at the town of St. Joe. Is that a meeting with? No, I don't know what the status is of. of uh, it's kind of intriguing. Jeff and Al talk to him. It's kind of intriguing. And Stan, I'm sure, is. Stan is. He's a sharp, he's a sharp, sharp, and he should be on board with that, too. I would think the three of them would gang up on Well, he's, he's on board with it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He's right. on board with the removal of I don't understand that. Why you wouldn't be? That's the, that's the part I don't get. Because it yeah, it just makes this, the financial situation for library. Well, was dire. there was there? Uh, you just gotta wonder if you were a fly on the wall, and that's why I'm just wondering. Does any no reason for action or discussion next agenda, right? On on St. George, where that goes? Uh, do we I have to do anything as a board? No, no, no. Because we got to revise a new budget at forty grand stays. Right, we just yeah. You know, uh, I know the mayor is uh, in my discussion with him. He was going to circle back with them and, and try to get them back together again. That's all I know. I, I I think that I think I can confidently say that that is in the hands of the uh, respective municipalities. The heads of state I used to call Yes. <laughs> but there, I, the other thing on the horizon, of course, is the, is the lease. And we're going to have to come up to, with some conclusion before this ad hoc committee. Um, we are. Well, uh, either that or the, the city's just going to have to be in limbo. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you can't make a decision, you can't make a decision. If the city has to move forward with their, you know their own uh, strategy or their own you know whatever they need to do or they need to find a new tenant or they need to sell the building they'll have to move forward with that, right. that knowing that we're, but we're gonna, still in discussions rich we're talking about the lease obviously that's coming up here and so we're going to need to some guidance on this is to um, 
it's going to be short term. I, I don't think that, given that we, this committee is, is exploring other alternatives, I really don't think it would be wise to be going long term, um, unless we have some provision that we want us to get out of it. I think if the board wants to put forward a proposal for a one year or two year extension of the lease, that's probably giving the city some direction. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But then, but then the city, as Kurt says, if the library board is saying they're intending to do something different a year from now, the city would then have to move forward with right. some other plans. So that <coughs> one, one action will create another action because the building can't stay empty. You know, so if the library leaves, the city's going to have to have a plan in place to do something. Well, I don't plan that. I, I, I hear that. I agree with that. So that's and, just I, and, and I would say that in, in the event that there is an opportunity for, or if it's if it's, if it's just pure pressure on on what we're doing here, it would dictate that we have to move somewhere. That's two, three years down the road. I would suspect. We having a discussion about this ad hoc committee and what you're doing. Beg your pardon. Are we having a discussion about this? Well, I thought we were beyond that, but yeah, go ahead. Okay, because, well, again, I'm a stickler for the open meetings law. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that we're not out of bounds here. But, that, you know, I think, and then we have a city representative here, um, you know, it to me, you have to, the, the city's going to have to look at several variables there because, you know, it's, in my opinion, may be difficult to find another tenant to pay $132,000 for this rent. It's, it's, I think, somewhat simplistic for the city to say that it's a value um, at $132,000 because as I've said to a couple of city representatives, you know, if I see a bargain for a buck but I only have 50 cents in my pocket, that's not much of a bargain for me because I can't buy it. Um, so I think there's a lot that goes into that and I don't think we should discount a reduced lease. I still don't think we should just kind of reduce lease because in the long run, it may be more financially advantageous for the city to accept the reduced lease, at least in the short run, uh, rather than having the building sit empty um, or selling the building if the building is going up in value. Um, I mean, from what I've heard, the value of the building has gone up since it's been purchased by the city. I mean, if I'm sitting on something that's appreciating in value, by a couple hundred thousand dollars a year or three hundred thousand dollars a year and I accept the lease that's thirty thousand dollars less that seems like a pretty good investment to me um, you know what I'm saying so there's a lot that goes into that decision I think I don't think I think we're I think we're um, discounting that option more than we should um, and, and, and the sad reality of it is I think that the city, and again, you're, I mean, you're on the city council, you guys, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to really talk about it until it becomes an issue, until it becomes a situation where it's, well, libraries just can't kind of stay there. Um, but I think it would behoove the city to maybe preliminarily discuss that because you know the situation we're in, you had the finance committee. So I would, if I was the city, maybe have Neil put the numbers together and somebody look at that, but it seems to me like it may even be more advantageous to the city to accept a reduced lease rather than see the library leave the building. Just, there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just a simple equation. There's, there's a lot, but all I just want to mention is that it's not a city library, it's a joint library. There are three other municipalities involved. So when you talk about reducing the lease, you talk about increasing the funding by the city to the library. And therefore, there would be pressure for all of the municipalities to increase their funding at the same percentage. I disagree just, with that. Just the, so that the lease so that it's a joint. It's but a we just, uh, I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you on that perception because you, you it's the lease cost that's an increasing funding. No, it's, it's no different. It's an Rich, no, listen, it, it's no different than the. Right now, who is fixing the roof? It's the city's building. Correct. It's the city's building. It's not the joint library's building. And and so the lease is between the city and the joint library. The lease, the, the other municipalities, as much as you might think that everybody's going to have to absorb that, I disagree with that. It's the, the city purchased the building. The city has the lease with the joint library. 
Um, and and if, and if it's, a, it's a negotiation between the joint library and the city. Under, it's not a different situation where, you know, the, the lease goes, the, the, you know, that, it's just. The library is in the city's building because of the joint library agreement. One of the terms and conditions of the joint library agreement was this arrangement. And it was put together by the joint library agreement. That's correct. With all of the municipalities saying that's what everybody wanted to do. So it's a term and condition of the joint library. But if in your your, your, your scenario, I, I just don't I would it. expect that the partners would have to ante up some more money if the city yeah. was able to reduce the yeah, under the terms and conditions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Clearly, clearly, clearly. You get six of one and a half dozen the other. I don't get I don't understand, I don't agree. I it's don't, a, it's a partnership. Be. It's a it's a it's a sharing. It's a partnership. It's not a sharing of the it's building though. It's a sharing of the facilities. It's sharing of the service. It's sharing of, of what your of your public offering. We're the tenant. You just happen to be. We're the you tenant. just happen to be in the city, but it's a partnership. The collection is owned by the partnership. The building is the building is owned by the city. We're talking the about the service the is the service, but the service. What is the building for? Well, we're the talking about the service, the service. and the is service is, is is shared jointly. The city bought the building for a certain amount. I would expect it. Well, if the city sells the building, they're not going to divvy up the, the proceeds to the partners. Is the city going to divvy up the proceeds? If they bought it for $2.5 million and they sell okay. it for $4 million, are they going to divvy that out back out to the partners? Okay. At the same amount that they contributed to buying the building, we'll divvy it up. Correct. But That's what I'm saying. Sold. And, so what they, and they didn't contribute. Okay. It's the city's building. That's my point all along. Uh, and, and I think that... But it's under the terms and conditions of the joint We can talk about this a long time. No, we can. Yeah. It's not... Well, Suffice to say, um, it, it, it certainly is an option to talk to the city and see if they'd be willing to renegotiate the lease. Absolutely. At, I mean, which, at which point, at which point yeah. if they even the would consider it, they will go to the other partners. Absolutely. Actually. They have to involve the partners. So, sure. so I Absolutely. will initiate Absolutely. that conversation if you'd like and, uh, and get back to you. But um, I shouldn't say what. <laughs> but I know how it's going to end up. So anyway. Absolutely. Um, but I will do that. Okay. Anything else? Anything? Uh, uh, agenda well, items? Well, agenda well, items for the next meeting? Yeah. <laughs> He's we'll moving. Move no, second. <laughs> second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I said I was going to be out here.